In this section, we're going to take a look at an introduction to unit testing. Our videos are going to cover JUnit syntax and JUnit classes, some annotations, setup and teardown, and then we're going to write some sample, simple JUnit tests. So first of all, let's talk about JUnit syntax and classes. In JUnit, we have things called fixtures, test suites, test runners, and test classes. A fixture has any prerequisites set up and tear down for running tests. A lot of times if we want to put some prerequisites together, like open a connection to a JSON feed or something like that, and we want to do this in multiple tests, we'll do it in a class called a fixture. But we also want to keep in mind that our unit tests should really just be testing one unit of code at a time. So instead of opening a bunch of prerequisites, we might want to take a look at mocking objects. We'll take a look at mocking objects with Mockito in a later section. Now we have test suites that will aggregate tests together so that we can run them all at once. This is a good idea if we want to test all of our DAOs or maybe test our service layer and our DAO together. We can use a test suite to do this all at once. Now we have also a class called Test Runner, which will run our JUnit tests. In Android, this might be handy if we have a script that runs our tests. But to be honest, a lot of running the test is built into Android Studio automatically. All we need to do is right-click and say Run. So some of these classes we'd use in a standard JUnit test, but aren't as necessary in an Android JUnit test. Then we finally have the JUnit test classes where we are writing our tests. This is where we're saying we want to verify that our tests pass. So an assert is going to be important here because an assert is where we say this is what we expect to be true. For example, an expected value equals an actual value. Or a Boolean value is true or an object is null or an object is not null. One of those things. And then we have a, a test case which is where we define the test that we want to run. Now, in JUnit 3, we would extend a test case class, but in JUnit 4 with annotations, it's not as necessary. We can use annotations to determine which test we want to run. And then finally, a test result class will aggregate together the result of running tests. So, test case, we have setup and teardown methods, but here again, we'll see that we can do this with uh, before and after annotations, and also before class and after class annotations, which we're going to discover in the next video. That being said, a lot of times we will still name a method set up and tear down, and we'll simply annotate it with the before test and after test, or uh, before and after class, because those are the methods that we're used to seeing from JUnit 3. There are several other methods that are not as frequently used on test case, which are fairly self-explanatory. Run, get and set name, create result, and count test cases. So we'll take a look at an example here in just a moment. Our next video is going to look at annotations in more depth, but we'll just kind of take a preview of that right now. We already have our layers set up from a previous video, so we're going to jump right into the test directory here. Remember, that's where we put any standard unit tests that don't require the Android framework. I'm going to choose New in Java class, and I'm going to call this Test Plant DAO. Now, I don't need to extend anything because this is JUnit 4, and... I actually, the, the test plant DAO naming convention is kind of a throwback to JUnit 3, where we had to actually use the word test in the class name. We don't still need to do that, but for history's sake, oftentimes we do. Also, it's descriptive. It tells us what we are testing. So I say yes, check this into version control. Now, in true test first design, we want to write the test first before we've even written the code. I'm going to take some liberties here. I'm going to write a test against the stub that I created a few videos ago, just so that we can get a little bit of satisfaction in watching a sample unit test work. So first of all, let's make a new method. Let's say uh, test plant DAO, and then we'll say search for redbud should return at least one result. Note that it's a very long method name, and that's 
very much on purpose. Uh, also, I need to say public void because the method name should adequately describe what the test is doing. Now, I need a couple of annotations, so I'm going to say at test up above. That's going to tell me that this is a method that is running a unit test. You see, as soon as I do that, Android Studio is smart enough to give me a couple of play buttons here, which will allow me to play either all tests in this class or just this one test method, which is quite nice. Also, I can create a public void setup method where I do any kind of initialization, and I can annotate that with the before method, uh, before annotation rather. The setup method was common in JUnit 3. We don't need to use that same syntax anymore of calling it setup. We just need to have that at before annotation. We'll talk a lot more about annotations in our next video. So I have my two uh, testing methods. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a reference to the class that I am testing. I'm going to say I plant DAO, plant DAO. We're simply going to define a variable for the DAO we are testing. In the setup method then, I can say plant DAO equals new plant DAO. Now see, this is how we would typically write a test first design test is actually we would call a constructor of a class that does not yet exist. And step number one would be to create that class after we write our unit test where the unit test tells us what we want to do. But again, in this video, in this specific video, we just want to take a look at some unit test syntax. So I'm going to go ahead and fill this in with the stub that we created in a prior video. Okay, now in our test method, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say plant DAO dot fetch plants, and we're going to pass in the string red button. Okay, in Android Studio, Control Alt and V. If I have my cursor on a method, Control Alt and V will look at the return type of that method and assign that to a new local variable. And we see, sure enough, it assigns it to a new local variable. We'll choose the name plants. And what's really nice about that control alt v is it knows what type this method returns. So it knows that fetch plants returns a list of plant DTOs. And it's smart enough to figure that out for us. That's going to save us a lot of time. Now what we can do is we can put together a for each method. A for each method is going to take a look at a collection, uh, something that implements the iterable inter interface, which in this case, list iterates iterable. So it's going to take a look at that collection and it's going to basically shake hands with each item in that collection. So I put the collection on the right side of the colon. On the left side of the colon, I put the type of the object that is in that collection. So plant DTO plant colon plants means I'm going to shake hands with everybody in this plants collection. And each time I iterate, I'm going to take one item. I'm going to put it into a variable called plant. Now within my for loop, I can say uh, if plant dot get, let's say get common, and then we can say contains, and then we can say red bud. Then we're going to call this success. Okay, it might be better to actually look at the genus as well. A red bud, all red buds are in the genus Circus. So really a better test might be to look at the genus as an attribute, maybe even the species, Canadensis. But we're going for simplicity here. We're just taking a look at the syntax of a unit test. Now, what do I mean by success? Well, this is a little bit interesting because our requirement is that we have at least one matching result. So let's start by assuming we do not have a match. And I'm going to make a Boolean variable. And we'll say redbud found equals false. OK. And then if we find a redbud, we're simply going to flip that switch to true. Redbud found equals true. And then after the iteration is over, we're going to say assert true. And then we're going to say redbud found, like so. OK. Assert true requires that we. Uh, handle some imports here just like so okay and we'll say did we find a red button now in a later video we'll take a look at a more modern way that we can do a search with something called hamcrest 
This assert true syntax is something that we see a lot in JUnit 3 and 4. It's kind of like a second generation of asserts. We're now on to even a third generation, uh, where, which is called a Hamcrest style assert, which certainly is supported in Android Studio, as we'll see in a future video. But at this point, we have enough at least to verify that our unit test will run. I click on the Run Test button, just like so, to run the single method. It's using a built-in JUnit runner. You notice I didn't really have to do uh, anything magic to get, this to, uh, to get this to run as a unit test. So I have my annotation. I'll tell you what, it didn't like that, did it? Test plant DAO, okay. Uh, I have my assert true. I'm going to go ahead and run it the old-fashioned way. I'm going to right-click and choose Run. And sure enough, when we run like so, we see that we do get a successful result, one test pass. Just to make sure that it didn't dummy something up, I could put some garbage in here, and I could run it one more time. Okay. And this should say, okay, it didn't work because I just put garbage data and nothing matched that. Let me go ahead and set it back to Redbud, and just to be sure, run it one more time, and we choose Run and everything should pass. And sure enough, we pass. Okay. We see that now my individual run just this test passes. I suspect it had a little hiccup there earlier just because it hadn't done a full build, but after we uh, ran the full test, now it's happy to just run this one method individually or the entire class itself and give me results. We see that we got success because we got a green bar, and when we get a green bar, the correct thing to do is smile because our unit test is passed, which indicates that the code we have written is quality code as well.